Praise God. You're about to listen to the Word of God from God's chosen vessel, Pastor Eric Bohen, Senior Pastor of Christ Empowerment Center Ministries. Now, I commend unto you this Word of God, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the saints in the light. Please listen to the undiluted Word of God from God's chosen servant for the nations. Oh, praise God. We give God the praise. We give God the worship. I'll bring greetings to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak to you on the topic, God has given me the cure for worry. The cure for worry. And I believe that if there is anything that you and I need to know, it's about how we overcome anxiety. How we overcome, not worry. And this morning I bring to you a revelation on the cure for worry. How to overcome worry. How to live a worry-free life. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are experiencing. I don't know what you are feeling. I don't know what somebody has told you. But I believe there is a cure in the Bible concerning how not to worry. And that's why I don't want you to go anywhere. Just stay and listen to what God is about to teach you. Father, I thank you this morning. Now, one more time, you will breathe on this word. And you will cause your children to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to you, my sister, my brother, this morning. I say the cure for worry. Turn with me to Matthew, the chapter it says, and the verse is 25. Matthew, the chapter it says, and the verse is 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry. About your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not? Of more value than they, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So, why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet, I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so close the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the the oven, would he not much more clothe you, O you of little feet? Therefore, do not worry, saying what we shall eat, what we shall drink, or what we shall wear. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, that, this is what the Bible is saying. Now, before I start talking to you about the cure for worry, how to overcome worry, I want you and I to know that we are going through things. Circumstances are bad. You and I have every cause to worry. If you read Second Timothy, the chapter is 3. The verse is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I want to admit, and I want to understand why you are worried. It may not be your fault. It may be because of what you have heard or what you are going through. 
But I believe there is a cure. There is a solution. There is a victory. That when we get a revelation, we can cross over and live anxiety free and live worry free. Now turn with me to 2 Timothy. The chapter is 3. The Bible says, now I want to read from the Amplified Bible. But understand this, that in the last days will come perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered. Lovers of money, aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant, contemptuous, boasters, they will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection. Callous, inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truth or appeasement, they will be slanders, slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate, loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. Now, these are the signs of the last days. And you and I will admit that these things are going on and therefore you have got every cause to worry. The Bible says in the last days. Now the question is that when the Bible talks of the last days, we are in the last days. And therefore, that these things are going on, you and I need to be worried. But I, by the grace of God this morning, I am speaking to you by what God has impressed on my heart, the cure for worry. The cure for worry. Not the cure for only pains. Not the cure for only adversity. But anything that causes you to be stressed, anything that causes you to be worried, I bring to you the cure for worry. So I admit that we are in last days because the last days began the very day Jesus started preaching. Now you may not understand, but that's what the Bible says. When the Bible talks of the last days, the last day didn't happen in the year 2000. The last day didn't happen in the 1990s. The, year, the last day didn't happen in the 1900. And the last day didn't happen yesterday. The last days happened even 2000 years ago. Let me show you. It is in the Bible. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. The verse is 1. The Bible says that the last day started the very day Jesus Christ of Nazareth started preaching. Now that tells you that we are in the last of the last days. And that because we are in the last of the last days, you and I will go through challenges. You and I will go through difficulties. You and I will go through perilous times of great stress and distress. And therefore you have got every cause to worry. Now look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. God, who at various times and in various Ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2 has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. The Bible says God has spoken to us through Jesus Christ in these last days. Now, so it means the very day Jesus came and appeared and started preaching, God spoke to us. The very day Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That was the last day. Now, if Jesus came 2,000 years ago, and we have, that was the last day, then today is also a last day. And we are in the last days of the last day. And the Bible says, when we are in the last days, difficult times will come. These are times people have finished school and they are not getting jobs. These are times women are beautiful, but no man is proposing love and marriage to them. These are times that people have got everything that they need. When you are drinking water, you can see your face in the water. But diseases have spread. Diseases that nobody knows where they came from. 
These are times that strange diseases, strange sicknesses, people are dying before their time. These are times that strange, 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 strange circumstances are happening. These are times that people who have got PhDs, who have got professional qualifications, are not getting jobs. These are times that people are moving from here to here, trying to find greener pastures. These are times that everyone is anxious. These are times that everyone does do not know and does not know what will happen the next day. These are times are difficult. Times are difficult. Business are closing down. People are losing their jobs. These are times that children are, running, are obeying their parents. These are times you cannot talk to anybody and even when you love people, they think you have got ulterior motive. When, even when you, have, you are kind, People think we have got an ulterior motive. These are times people cannot trust each other. These are times, whether in church, outside the church, you don't know who is your friend. These are times, and the Bible says, the difficult times will come. But in the midst of all this, I come and submit to you that you and I should lead a worry free life. Now, tell with me to where I started from Matthew chapter 6. The Matthew chapter says where I read. I want you to note four things before I tell you about the cure for worry. Who are those who worry? And why are you worrying? And if you worry, how does God see you? If you are hearing me and you have, you are, you have clothed yourself with worry, I've got good news for you. And the Bible says, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, know about your body, what you will put on. Is life no more than food and the body no more than clothing? Now, you know what God is telling you here? He's asking you, why are you worried? Because you don't have a car? Because you don't have a husband? Because you are sick? Because you have lost your job? Because you are aging? Now, can the dead person think about these things? The first thing I want you to know is that the worry here what God is saying in verse 25 is that you don't know what is important in life. Anyone who worries and is alive and is worrying doesn't know what is important in life. Because there are some people who can eat without any support machine. Others are eating through the tube. For almost one month now, they have never been fed through their mouth. And people are only praying for them that they should get up and walk again. They should get up and eat. The people are even begging them to eat. The food is nice, but they cannot take their hands. They are being fed through other parts of their body, not through their mouth. They cannot swallow. And Jesus said that it's life not more important than this. In other words, if you have got life, but you don't have other things, if you have got life, but you don't have clothing, others have got clothing, but they don't have life. So worry is a sign. First thing I want you to know, before I tell you about solution to worry, the first thing I want you to know is that worrying, people who worry too much, and everything you are thinking about, you don't know what is important in life. If you don't have life, can you worry? If you don't have life, can you drive a car? If you don't have life, can you get to a, be, can, can you be where that? If you don't have life, can you get that decent job, that education, that man you are looking for, that woman you are looking for, that house you want to buy, that purpose you are looking for, the things that are stressing you. If you don't have life, that's why Jesus is asking at verse 25. Is life not more important than this? In other words, what is important in life, people don't know. If you are on oxygen, 
and you have to pay every day to brief. You say, I'm poor. I don't have money. Assuming you cannot brief, and they ask you to pay some money every day, pay 10 pounds, to brief the whole day for the rest of your life. Some of us, we will tell them to take the life support machine. We want to go home early. That means you are rich. That means you are not poor because you don't need to pay for the oxygen. You don't need to pay to brief. Uh, somebody was selling me in Nigeria. Every one hour to, to be on a life support machine, you pay 4,500 Naira. Now, if you pay 4,500 Naira to be on a life support machine for just one hour, you multiply by 12 a day. Then multiply by 30 a month. If your parents are rich, let them do that for you for two, three months. They will come and tell their doctors, please take off the machine. Let him, let him or her go. It means the problem you and I have is not money. Because after all, you don't have you, your, your bank account. Every man, God has credited it with enough money to pay for oxygen for you. But you are worried because you, are not, you don't have a husband. You are worried because you don't have papers. You are worried because you don't, have not got the job you want. You are worried because nobody has, has, has loves you. You are worried and you are stressed. You are getting depressed because of what or that you don't have. I say you don't know what is important in life. So that's the first thing. The second one. Jesus also said, how many of you by worrying can add a cubit to his life? Verse 20. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Matthew says 27, that also tells you and I that worrying does not add anything to your life. It rather takes from your life. So which of you, by, by worrying, can add? Now, as I'm going to talk to you about the cure for worry. Now, the reason why I need to talk to you about the cure for worry, the first thing, second one, you should know is that worry does not add anything to you. It rather deduct, subtract, minus things from your life. It will make your face miserable. It will torture your mind. It will make it will take away your beauty, how pretty you are, how, how, how handsome you are. People will know you are stressed. People will know you are depressed. This is a, which of you, by worrying, can add anything to your life? Which of you, by worrying, can add anything, even a cubit. You are short, you are worried. Say, so can you, by worrying, can you increase your height? You are fat, by worrying, can you decrease? You are tall, by worrying, can you become short? Say, so which of you, by worrying, can add anything to your heart? You can't. In other words, he's talking about adding to worry. Worrying does not add anything to us. To worry, it doesn't increase you. It rather decreases you. Anyone who worries, it doesn't increase you. If you, could, you can worry the whole year, three, six, five days, three, six, eight days, two, seven, eight days, one, twenty days within the year, it will add nothing. Rather, it will deduct. It will take away from you. You will get sicknesses. You will get pains. You will get stress. The cure for worry. The reason why you need a cure for worry, worry does not add anything. The next, the next thing Jesus said about worry, which I want you to know, so that when you listen to the cure for worry, you will pay attention and become obedient. Point number, number four, verse 30. So now, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the fire oven, Will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. People who worry, it's a sign that you don't have faith in God. You of little faith. People who worry, the, 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 the sign that you don't trust and believe God to cross you over is your worry. And the child of God who is living in worry, 
It's a sign that you don't believe the God you are serving. You're going to church is in vain. You telling people you are a Christian is in vain. The evidence that you believe God is worry free. The evidence that you don't believe God is full of anxiety. That's the truth. So you of little faith. Because if you are full of faith and you believe God will do it for you, you enter into his rest. Things may be bad. Things may be going worse in your life. If truly you believe God will do it for you and God is doing it for you, you see that you will be at peace. You are anxious because you don't believe the God. Even though you pray every day, you don't believe. Even though you sing and you go to church, you may be even the pastor of the church. You may be the choir leader. You may be the praise and worship team leader. You may be somebody very active. You carry position in the church. But the evidence that you don't believe God is, because, is the fact that you are sh- full of anxiety. You are anxious. You are worried. You are troubled. Anytime you are troubled, anytime you are full of anxiety, this is a you of little faith. Evidence that you, the reason why you are worried, it means you have not gotten to a point where you have entered into his rest, where you have said, Lord, take over. Lord, you are in control. Lord, I cannot do it anymore. I surrender all to you. That's the, the reason why you are worried. The point number four, I want you to know about worry. Jesus said in verse 32, verse 32, he said, but after all these things, the Gentiles seek. The people who worry are Gentiles. That's what the Bible is saying. Gentiles, unbelievers, that's unbelievers. They worry. They seek after things. The Bible says that after all these things, the Gentiles are seeking after a child of God, a believer, a born again child of God, you don't behave like a Gentile. So this is saying that now when you see people seeking after things and getting worried, Gentiles seek after those things. But they say, but you seek, you, 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 for you, your heavenly father knows you, you need them. So relax, read the, the, the verse and understand. Matthew says, it said, after all these things, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. You see, it's not, it's not that God is not aware you need a husband or you need a, you need papers or you need health, good health or you need to get money or a job or a child or anything that will make life at peace or be at peace so that you can be at peace. God is aware. God knows you need them. But the Gentiles seek after them. Gentiles are worried. The unbelievers, they go from, they go heaven and earth, even killing human beings to get it. But the Bible says, God knows you need them. Now, the point I'm saying that if you are worried, it's a sign also that you think God is not aware of your problem. Instead of worrying, I want you to now listen to the cure for worry. The cure for worry. Because if you are getting worried, it's an evidence that you don't know one, what is important in life. It's because you are getting worried, thinking that by getting worried and getting worried, it will rather increase. But Jesus said, it has no nothing to you. The, th- the third thing I've mentioned here, before I start telling you the cure for worry, is worrying is a sign that you don't have faith. The fourth one I want you to note it's by worrying, you are copying the Gentiles. You are behaving like an unbeliever. A believer must live a worry-free life. The cure for worry. I want to talk you through some points. Write them down. Write them down. The points, the things you should do to live a worry-free life. Now turn your Bible with me to Philippians chapter 4. The verse says, Philippians chapter 4, and the verse it says, The Bible says, Do not worry, fret, or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition and definite requests with thanksgiving. 
continue to make your wants known to God. So, the first solution God has prescribed in the Bible is Philippians chapter 4, the verse it says, Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer, by petition, by definite request, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Now, the first point cure to, to worry is to pray. The first, the Bible says, don't be anxious. Don't worry. Whatever you are going through, don't worry. Because by worrying, you can add nothing. Make prayer. The Bible says continue in petition. The Bible says continue to make requests. And with thanksgiving, even though it's bad, even though it's difficult, even though nobody understands you, the Bible says thank God. Make your request. Make your petition. Keep on talking to God. Keep on talking to God. Keep on thanking God. Oh, I am not married. Yes, thank God. Are you, you don't understand. I don't have papers. Yes, yeah, thank God. Oh, these secret doctors have told me I'm, 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 I'm sick of this disease. Thank God. Now, you see, begin to thank God. Begin to worship God. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to say, Lord, help me. Begin to say, God, be in control. Begin to say, Father, I give you praise. I worship you for my circumstances. I bless you for what you are doing. So in all things, you be anxious. Do not fret. Have no anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance and in everything, every circumstance and in everything, let your request, let your request, let your request be made known to him. It's not me sitting there and crying and crying. Has it changed your story? Ever since you have been worrying, You've been worrying and worrying and worrying. A man told us, a sister who wanted to get married. She will be worrying and go to, she was, she was so pretty. She thought that only by, by fasting and prayer. She fasted and prayed, but in the midst of doing all those things, she was worried. And now she became like a skeleton. Became like a skeleton. And okay, okay, you are looking for a husband. You are praying and trusting God for a man. And now you have become like a skeleton. When, man see, when a man sees you, do you think you'll be attracted to that man? Because men, they don't go with their heart, they go with their eyes. So even though you are praying and you are fasting, if you add worry to pray and fasting, it doesn't change. In fact, it doesn't go anywhere. You are only wasting your time. The evidence that you know God is doing, that's what the Bible says, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, you are praying, you are thanking God. You know God is in control. You are full of happiness. You are full of joy. You are full of strength. You are full, you are full of beauty. You are full of pre uh, uh, anything that a woman carry, a man carry. You are looking for job. You are preparing your CV. You dress smart. You move out. You are confident in yourself. Now you are praying, but you are worried. They ask you, what is your name? Say, I come from this country. I was born in that village. They ask you, what is your name? Say, I am from here. Which university do you attend? Oh, I did very well. Did. Now, you see, because you, you are full of worry. You, can, you, you, see, you, you, you cannot even answer questions. And when you come back and say, no, the way the enemy is attacking me, be worry free. Be anxious free. Be anxiety free. Do not fret yourself. Be relaxed. But in all circumstances, in every situation, let your request be made known to God. So point number one, make consistent. I know you have been praying, but you pray and get worried. It doesn't take you anywhere. The pastor Eric, but I've been praying, you know. When you are talking about the cure for worry, this one I know. But what's how, how so that are you say, telling me that I don't pray? I know you pray, but after you have prayed, you worry. You worry. So point number two, obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. 
See, simple, simple instructions will take you far to work with God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, told the disciples in John chapter 2, verse 5, whatever he tells you, do it. Whatever he tells you, what do it. Do it. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Jesus said, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Now, that is a, a, a simple statement. It requires simple obedience. Obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. Jesus says, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Now, all that you need to do, obey. You see, obey Jesus. Obey Jesus. I say about Pastor Eric, you don't understand. How can I? I am not worry. Look at my age. With all my friends, look at me. With all what I carry, you don't know the family I'm coming from. In my family. Now, you don't know the family you also come from because you don't come from any family. You belong to God. You are of the family of God. There are only two families that God knows. You came through your mother and your father, yes. But when you become a child of God, you are no more spiritually of that family. The Bible says in Philippians, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15, God has got a family in heaven and on earth. Those who are saints, who are Christians, who die and go to heaven, they are God's family. They are in heaven. Read your Bible. Ephesians 3.15 Now those of us who are here and truly we are Christians, we are God's family on earth. That's why when Jesus was preaching in Matthew chapter 12, verse 46, 47, 8, 9, and 50, they said, your mother and your brothers are waiting outside. He said, who is my mother? Who is my sister? Who is my, my, my brothers? These are my brothers. Anyone who hears the word of God, and it's a doer of the word of God. It's my brother. It's my sister. Now, it, so if you obey God, you don't say in my family, nobody gets married and nobody gets rich and nobody gets job and nobody age beyond 40 years. I say, if you, if you truly belong to the family of God, all those nonsense don't follow you. The Bible said the handwriting of ordinance, that was against you. That was contrary to you. He took it away and nailed it to the cross. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. He took it away. And nail it to the cross. Anything that was written against you in your so-called family, your mother's family, your father's family, Jesus took it away. That means you don't belong there. You were born into that family naturally. But spiritually, you have been translated. You see, obey Jesus and let the word of God work for you. Some of you, you are too, you are too, you see, established in your natural family. You take pride in your natural family. You take pride even in your tribe. More than the tribe God has brought you to. More than the family of Christians. More than the family of the household of God. That God has brought you to. And that's why things will not change. I say obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. Simple, simple obedience. So if you are, if they obey him and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity. Their years in pleasure. That means anyone, Job 36, verse 11, he said, If you obey him and serve him, you will spend your days in prosperity, your years in pleasure. The person who is going to experience this blessing is an obedient child of God. What is God asking you to obey? Don't worry. Don't you worry. Don't you be anxious. Don't you go about crying as a child of God. I have never seen a child who knows his father has all, who goes about crying. No, no child, naturally, when you know your parents are rich, when you know your parents are in control of the affairs of this life, when you know your father is a president or a soldier or a police officer, even when you know your father that is, doesn't carry any title in society, but he's rich and he can drive with school, come back. And no child gets up early morning worrying about what to eat what to drink, what to wear. And God wants us to think that way. As a child of God, if truly you are, the Bible says, don't worry about your life, what you eat, what you will drink. For God is in control. Now, but then you are worried. I say, obey God. Pastor Eric, are you telling me I should just live my life without plan? I'm not saying don't plan. No, that's what I'm saying. Planning is different from worrying. Planning is different from worrying. Worrying is just sitting there as if the whole world is over you. 
and nobody can help you. You have no helper, and you are going to die. And I'm going to, I'm going to age without a husband. And I'm going no, see, that is what that's not planning. Planning is about how, when, where, who, what. Answering the questions of how do I do it? Where will I do it? When will I do it? Where should I do it? Why should I do it? Who should I do it with? That is planning. You are you are you see, you are sitting there, and you know God is going to do it for you, and you are planning the wedding, you are planning the job, you are planning building the house. Where? When? Why? I see that question. That's planning. That means you are not getting worried. But worry, you don't answer any question in your mind. You are meditating on the negatives. You are meditating on the negatives. Instead of meditating on the word of God, when you are worried, you think about negative things. It stresses you, and then it shows on your face. And the Bible says, a cheerful countenance will definitely come from a merry heart. If you see somebody whose face is nice, it means his heart is happy. The Bible says that a merry heart will always produce a cheerful countenance. But if you see somebody whose heart is sad and is in pains, no matter how he smiles, the smile is cosmetic. It's cosmetic smiles. It's fake. Because the heart is not right. And that's sometimes I see people in church. Oh, God bless you, brother. God bless you, pastor. But you know, the heart is wounded. The heart is crying. Why? Obey Jesus. Obey the word of God. The key of a worry. First, pray and cast all your cares upon him. Because he cares for you. Second, obey. Do not worry. I said, whatever he tells you, do it. Job 119 said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I know you are willing, but are you going to eat the good of the land? I know you are willing. You are willing to be blessed. I know you are willing to be blessed. Now, be willing to be blessed is not enough. But be obedient to the simple, simple instructions that he gives us. Point number three. You and I need to know that God even cares for. You see, there's no creature that God has not cared for. No, you see, when Jesus was talking to us in Matthew, he said, Look at the best of the air. Verse 26. For they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into bounds. Yet, your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So Matthew says, 26 is telling us that there's no creature of God that he does not provide for. The bears don't go begging God for food. The grass on the field don't ask God for water, but God feed them and water them. And God is saying that, the Bible is saying that, are you not more are you not of more importance as a human being created in the nature and the image of God? Not only that, you have got, taken a step of faith by accepting Jesus into your life. You are not an ordinary person. You are not an ordinary creature of God. You are not just created as a human being. You are a born again child of God. And the Bible says, are you not of more importance than this ones? So the point number three, I want you to know that. There's no creature that God does not provide for. God knows you need a husband. God knows you need a job. God knows you need good health. God knows you need children. God knows you need education. God knows you are thinking about planning a business, opening a business, starting a ministry. Anything on your heart, God knows. The Bible says, are you, you see, the key of a worry. Don't sit there crying that God has forgotten about. No, he hasn't. The best don't go about thinking that God has forgotten about them. No, even bears, animals. But they eat every day. A dog in your house. Even a dog doesn't cry about telling people, I want to eat, I want to eat. Because the dog knows, as a human being, as wicked as we are, we will give that dog something to eat. And the Bible says, are you not of more importance than these things? You, if you are going to be worry-free, Know that God cares about you. Know that he will never leave you nor forsake you. The Hebrews 13 verse 5, it said, and I say this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore I will say, if God be for me, who can be against me? 
Now, you see, you need to get to a point that you will believe God as it is in truth. He's a God in your life. So many people carry Bible, but we don't believe God. So are you not more important than this? How do you see yourself, my sister? How do you see yourself, my brother? God was comparing us with other creatures. He said, are we not more of more value than this? Now, if God so clothed the, the, the bears and if he watered the grass, Jesus said, are you not more important than this? It's simple. Telling you that God has you covered. It's telling you that God is in control of your circumstances. It's telling you that God is aware. It's telling you that God is not going to forsake you. It's telling you that you are coming out from that situation. I said, Pastor Eric, you don't understand. How long have you been in this situation? Yes, I told you the evidence that you don't have faith in God is your anxiety and worry. And the Bible says anyone who is doubting God, who is always anxious and worried, don't let not that man think he will receive anything from God. Read the book of James chapter 1, verse 4, 5, 6, 7 to 10. Read it. You will know that. The Bible says you are like someone at the sea, at the beach, tossed to and fro by the wind. You are not stable in your faith. You are not stable in your mind. You think God can provide for best, but God cannot provide for you. You think you are aging, so you can never get married. Who told you? You think you are aging, so you can never give them. Who told you? You think that people have gotten their papers in a foreign land where they find themselves, and you have been. Therefore, you cannot. Who told you? Believe God more than your circumstances, my brother. Believe God more than your circumstances, my sister. For because by getting worried and getting worried, you add nothing to your life. Jesus will ask you, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry? About Jesus as verse 27. Why do you worry? Do you think God cannot do it? Do you think if, if, if there are some people who are not beautiful, who are not pretty, but they are married, you know? They are married. So sometimes it's not about the beauty, also. And I know that's one of the areas that trouble our sisters. Oh. And I'm not going, I'm not married. And I'm aging. And, and, and I'm married and I don't have a child. This said, why do you worry? Why do you worry? Why do you worry? You don't understand what life is. Because there's no dead man or woman who will think about marriage. If God thinks you have finished and he has finished with you, you will not be alive, you know? The fact that you have got life is an evidence that God is working something big, better for you. If God has finished with you, you wouldn't be alive. Now, for all, some people are alive, but they are not marryable. Nobody will marry them because of their physical circumstance or because of certain things that has happened to them. But you, you are hearing me today. Your situation is not like that. Some people wanted to get visa to an overseas country. They didn't get it. You cross over. You heard you were came, you didn't go through the sea as people have been crossing and dying. You came in the flight. Whether your papers were correct or not, God made a way for you. Now you have arrived in a foreign land and look at the way you are behaving. You are worried every day. That same God that brought you over. Can't he, can't he provide for you? And that's why we stay in our predicament. That's why we stay in our predicament. Say, Pastor Eric, but I'm not going through any of those things. I'm sick. Yes, but this is not the only sickness you have ever had. Ever since you were born, some sicknesses came, some pains came, but God preserved your life. You didn't die. You are still alive. What is the evidence that this one will finish your life? What is that? Why are you so fearful? Why are you so timid? Why are you so worried? Because you are sick. Many have been sick more than you are sick, but they are alive. If you many died, and but they are alive. So uh, the evidence that God can bring you back is your faith in him. So why do you worry? Why do you worry? Why do you worry? The point I want you to know is that God provides for every creature of his own. 
including bears, including leaves, including animals, even trees, God provide for them. And Jesus asked the question, are you no more important than this? Are you not important than all these things? Are you not valuable than all these things? Now, let me show you something. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. First Peter chapter 5, the verse 7. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. <laughs> the Amplified has amplified First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Now let me read it again. It said, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. You see? You see, it didn't say just cast it today and tomorrow take it back and cast it tomorrow and take it back and cast it. No, it said cast it once and for all. All your worries, all your anxieties, all your concerns, not some of them. Why? For he cares for you affectionately. That's God loves you. God loves you. Affectionately means that he loves you more than you think. And cares about you watchfully. You see, God has not only loved you, He's also caring about you watchfully. He cares about you watchfully. He cares about you watchfully. That means don't just sit there thinking that nobody loves you and nobody's in your life. I don't have anyone. Nobody's no, you see, you don't have anyone. And my friends, when they are going for their God connection, they have got men in their lives, they have got women in their lives, they have got connection. You see, if you are not connected to man, let me tell you today, you are connected to the king of kings. You are connected to the Lord of laws. The, world, the, 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 all, the whole world is the Lord. The Bible says the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. If the people, your friends go with letters from uh, 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 members of parliament, honorable men, or people who, who matter in life, you don't have anyone. Your parents have not gone to school. Your mother and your father, they are illiterate like mine. But it doesn't matter what matters. is what? You are connected with and to God. He cares affectionately for you. He watches over you. I sit there crying and I don't have anybody. And nobody, you see, the guy sits at the, uh, in John chapter 5, Bethesda, the pool, for 38 years. And they, they Jesus said, do you want to get up and walk? He said, oh, I don't have anybody. But the man was telling you the one, the solution, the one who has the answer, the key to your life, was standing in front of the man saying, do you want to walk? Do you want to be made who said, Lord, oh, you know, I've been here for 38 years. Any time I'm trying to enter the pool, I just go ahead of me because I am capable. My Jesus said, do you want to get up and walk? Simple an question, simple answer. Today, what is God telling you? God is saying to you, a very simple statement of truth, not fact. It said, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. Once and for all. Once and for all. And if I were you, as I'm teaching now, today, it doesn't say tomorrow. Today, cast it, all your anxieties, all your concerns, all your worries. Cast them on him once and for all. Once and for all. Once and for all. Why? Because the Bible says, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. <laughs> what do you want again, my sister? What do you want again? If I were you, I would do that. If I were you, I would do that. Psalm 55 verse 22 says, cast your body on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. He said, cast your body on the Lord. He will sustain you. He will sustain you. The cure for worry. The cure for worry. Give it over to him. Don't hold it back. Once and for all, give it over to him. Don't hold it back. In sickness, give it over to him. Pains, give it over to him. Marital issues, give it over to him. Job, give it over to him. Financial issues, give it over to him. Anything, my sister, my brother. I said, give it over to him. Why are you sitting there crying? It adds nothing to your life. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. 
If you are under the sound of my voice, I want to pray for you. I am praying that anything that has taken away your peace be smashed in Jesus' name. I rain fire and brimstone. And I set ablaze the camp of the enemy. Anything stage against your life, causing you to lose your peace, to lose your joy, it should catch fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood that the blood will speak on your behalf. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things than the blood of Abel. May the blood speak peace in your circumstances. May the blood speak restoration in your circumstances. May the blood speak healing in your circumstances. May you be made whole in Jesus' name. May you overcome and cross over in Jesus' name. You are blessed, my sister. You are blessed, my brother. You can never remain the same. I said the key of a word, simple, simple instruction, requires simple, simple obedience. I bless God for your life. I know you are blessed. I know you are blessed. I want to give you the opportunity. If you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said, come to me. All those of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest there is to make you trouble free, worry free. People who worry are Gentiles. Jesus said, come to me. All those of you who labor and are heavy laden, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. I will give you rest. Jesus said, I am the solution center. I am the one who will take away your worry and give you peace. Come, just as you are. Don't stop whatever you are doing. Just come. And this one, I want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. You may go through what you are going through if you continue to remain a Gentile. A Gentile, you can even be going to church, but you have never met Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Say with me, Lord Jesus, today I've heard your word. That you are the solution center. You are the one that has called me not to worry. I surrender all to you. I make you the Lord of my life. The Savior of my soul. The Christ of my body, soul, and spirit. Be Lord every day. Forgive me all my sins. Forgive me all my iniquities and my trespasses. Wash me with your blood. And write my name in your eternal book of life. I thank you. I give you praise. For making me. Worry free, trouble free. I thank you that today I am a child of God. I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. My sister, my brother, if I pray that prayer, I can assure you, and I'm giving you that assurance according to the word of God. The Bible says, if anyone has Christ, he has got eternal life. Now, because you have received Christ, you have got eternal life. What you need is a Bible believing church. What you need is to be planted in a church where the word of God is taught purely, not just hold the Bible. Enter a church where the word of God is taught purely. If there's any church in your area where you are, visit them. Plant yourself in it. Psalm 92 verse 12 says that those who are planted in the house of God, they shall flourish. They shall progress. If you want to progress in life, plant yourself in the local church. Be rooted in the local church. Be established in the local church. If you are in London and you are closer to us, in North London, I can invite you to Christ Empowerment Center. Christ Empowerment Center. We meet every Sunday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. It's awesome. It, we call it Empowerment Zone. You hear the word of God, you'll be strengthening the inner man. 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Christ Empowerment Center. At the Dog Day Center, Enfield City Center. Enfield Town, 39 Landing Road. 39 Landing Road. The postcode is EN2. Says DS. Says DS. Says Delta Sugar. God bless you for listening. If this is tonight and today, I will come to you with part two for the cure. Of the cure for worry. The cure for worry. And I know you are blessed. I know you are blessed. I know you are blessed. God bless you for listening and remain blessed in Jesus' name.